we are true leaders, the beneficiaries of our efforts and our decisions should not be the special interest groups that donate heavily or assure substantial blocks of votes to our election and re-election. But our primary responsibility should be to assure these youngsters that the world we leave them that, and that they can rest assured that they too can live to be our age in a world of peace and prosperity. Mr. President, the youth of Guam will now perform a America with a visit to the island of Guam and we ask the Governor of American Samoa, the Governor of the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas, the President of the Federated States of Micronesia, the President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and the President of the Republic of Palau have all journeyed to Guam to join the Governor of Guam and the people of Guam in greeting the President and Mrs. Reagan, and where, whereas we have momentum of the mission of peace as it surges and touches our island communities, and be it further resolved that we hope and pray for the safety and success President, Federated States of Micronesia, Amata Kabua, President, Republic of the Marshall Islands, Harua I. Remelik, President, Republic of Palau, Ricardo J. Badalio, Governor of Guam. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. Thank you very much. Governor, my fellow citizens, and honored guests, thank you, and a warm half a day. I'm delighted to be here on Guam, where you're fond of saying that the rays of each sunrise first touch the stars and stripes, and that's a great way to start the day. It's an honor to be with all of you who've worked so hard to make this visit possible. My special thanks to Congressman Juan Pat, to Governors Bordalio, Coleman, Tenorio, and to President Nakayama of the Federated States of Micronesia, President Kabua of the Marshall Islands, and President Remilik of Palau. It's good to see that Assistant Secretary of the Interior Richard Montoya, High Commissioner Janet McCoy, and Ambassador Fred Zeter are also here today. Guam, the hub of the Pacific, is easily within range of almost all major cities in the Far East. For many people, Guam is a convenient stop on the way to someplace else. But for us, Guam means a great deal more. We may be nearly 9,000 miles from our nation's capital, but it's a real pleasure to know that we're among fellow Americans. Governor and Mrs. Bordaglio, thank you very much for such a warm and, and wonderful welcome. There has been so much history and greatness on this sparkling island of democracy. And this July, Guam will commemorate the 40th anniversary of its liberation. Together, we returned peace and freedom to this beautiful land. And together, we'll keep it that way. The men and women who serve on Guam are carrying on in the finest tradition of those before them. At Anderson Air Force Base and Aganya Naval Air Station, and on bases and ships all over the world, Americans in uniform are going about their duties with dedication, valor, and skill. And their mission is peace today, tomorrow, and for always. This morning as we left, the base in Honolulu, Hickam Airfield there, and I had the pleasure of speaking to those young men and women of ours in uniform, and there are so many here today. 
And I reminded them that at a time, and I thought it should be said to them, that at a time when there are people who would link the uniform and the military with the other causes of war and say that that is one of the reasons for war, let it be said here and now that those who wear the uniform are the peacemakers. And blessed are the peacemakers. And the better they perform their tasks, the greater is our chance of not seeing war again. There have been four wars in my lifetime. None of them started because America was too strong. <laughs> Incidentally, I might say, of all the things that go with the position I now hold, nothing Nothing has made me more proud than the young men and women, the people that are in the armed forces in, of all our branches. I am so proud of them that I can't look at them without getting a lump in my throat. The United States is proud to be part of the Pacific community. Pacific Americans have always lived up to the values that make us a good and worthy people. Values that begin with the sacred worth of human life, religious faith, family, community spirit, and hard work. I see some of you expected this. They told me that it really doesn't get you wet when it rains out here. So I'll just keep on going. And in times of crisis, few Americans have been more steadfast in the defense of our shared values, and few have made more sacrifices to preserve them. Together, we have built an enduring partnership for freedom, peace, and prosperity. And once again, America's new strength, confidence, and purpose are carrying hope and opportunity to people far from the mainland. While each island is proud of its own culture, economy and history, all share the desire for a brighter future for their people. We have a natural interest in the progress of all the island peoples of the Pacific. We want to help the development of their economies, and we will help keep the region free from tension and rivalries. With our partnership, much can and will be accomplished. We're looking forward to expanding and improving our ties with the island nations of the Pacific. We've reached an important milestone in the relationship between the trust territory and the United States. You were right, Governor. 14 years of negotiations on the future political status of the trust territory are drawing to a close. In 1975, the people of the Northern Marianas voted for Commonwealth status with the United States. And last year, the people of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, and Palau voted for a compact of free association defining a new relationship with the United States. Because the compact reflects the will of the people, I hope that both the United States Congress and the international community will recognize that complete self-government for the peoples of the trust territory should not be delayed. We have submitted the compact to the Congress and have urged full consideration and approval as soon as is feasible. In the meantime, we will continue negotiations in order to revolve or resolve the constitutional issues holding up resolution of Palau's future political status. The United States government will work closely with the Micronesian governments as they move forward in their new direction. We want to build on our shared values and develop an even better relationship. We are your close friends, and we will be reliable partners. In closing, let me echo the noble sentiment expressed in the Constitution of the Federated States of Micronesia. The Micronesian nation is born in an age when men voyage among stars. Our world itself is an island. We extend to all nations what we seek from each, peace, friendship, cooperation, and love in our common humanity.
Well, I know that those eloquent words express the feelings of all Americans. And again, Nancy and I, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for your very beautiful welcome here. God bless you all. Thank you. These students are Fred Martinez from Brody Memorial School, Robert Borja from George Washington High School, Teddy Byers from Minarahan High School, Vanessa P. Santiago from Carbolito Elementary School. Thank you very much. Please remain seated. We couldn't be more proud than this gift from these young people. And may we always remember these young people are what missions like this are all about for the world they're going to live in. Please remain seated while the President depart.